sold every week for your honey girl. Dark and heavy metal news, hard rock and good times. Get in the bathtub with me, girl, let's have a good time. Go, baby, baby, we jive. It's kind of a more of a sexy number that I was putting out there to all the ladies, you know. Give them a little something to think about when they're taking a bubble bath tonight. You know, that song sticks in the brains. You know, you'd be surprised. What kind of songs stick in the brain? Welcome, welcome one and all back to another stimulating episode of Jive Talking with Shane Diablo. I'm your best friend in the world indeed. Uh, your best friend cares about you deeply from far away. From very far away, I care about you deeply and make sure that you take good care of yourself. You know all the bad habits that you need to break. We all have bad habits that we need to break. Uh, sometimes they take longer than others, but you finally get to a point where you realize you got to break them habits. But this is not one of them. This is Jive Talking with Shane Diablo, episode 132. We've got your stories, your news nuggets. Um, things that we will not be talking about. Well, we won't be talking about the new Destruction song that they put out. I'm very excited about that. I'm going to have to put that in there somewhere. Um, so much news we won't be talking about. Here's a couple of items we shall be, and we will get started on. You can see this little guy right here. That's Paul Stanley. That's the star child. But we got to talk about Carrie King, Carmine Apice, or a piece, as we can get into that war. Lita Ford's got a new book coming out, and instead of me just whining like Sebastian Bach, we'll hear Sebastian Bach whine from the stage as he um, talks shit on his former band. Um, you know, of course, we know that Snake Sabo had said there ain't going to be no goddamn reunions with Sebastian Bach. So, but then Sebastian gets on stage in Detroit. He says a bunch of stuff, which we will listen to. And then now he's reporting and saying, no, that wasn't Skid Row. I was talking about Madam X, that band I was in for eight months, you know, 50 years ago. We're going to get into it. I welcome you one and all. I thank you for listening. I appreciate it. If you've went over and hit that five-star review on Spotify or wherever you listen, you've left a little uh, comment or something on Amazon. I know it's on Amazon Music and, and all that. I thank you so much. You guys are just a, a, a peach. And won't you be, if this podcast ever hit like a, you know, let's say 100,000. Let let's say I was the next Joe Rogan. Let's just say that. I mean, if we're dreaming, if you're going to dream, dream big. Um, interesting. Here's a little fun nugget for you. The There's an episode of a guy named Greg Overton on Joe Rogan just from a few months ago. Used to be my old roommate. He was my old roommate for a couple of years. Yeah. He's a Native American artist. He, he's not Native American. He's a white guy, but he paints Native American art. He apparently had an episode on Joe Rogan. But let's just say I was the Joe Rogan, okay? Let's pretend that my podcast got so big that I became the Joe Rogan. You find folks that are listening right now have bragging rights forever. You say, I was there for the first 130,000 episodes of that son of a bitch before anything ever happened for him. And you'll be one of those people. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um... Paul Stanley, here he is. Now, if you remember, at the very end of the End of the Road tour, the final night, Madison Square Garden, Kiss says, this is it, everybody. We're, we're, we're going to leave this stage now. Uh, and then what happened? The screen pops on. You see these images. They look like, you know, the 2000s version of Scooby-Doo characters or whatever. And uh, they say, we are immortal. That's right, people. We ain't going fucking nowhere. Well, Paul Stanley here is saying that the images you saw that night that we displayed before one and all at our final concert, no, that's not it at all. Which doesn't make any sense to me. Does that make sense to you that you would premiere something? Ta-da! This is our final show, everybody. And then it go, oh yeah, that's, no. No, none of that. Paul Stanley says, KISS avatars will look nothing like they did in the video preview. They will be mind-bogglingly realistic. Bogglingly. That's not a real word, is it? Mind-bogglingly? Boggling. They will be mind-boggling realistic. During an appearance on the latest episode of the Allison Hagendorf show, she's getting all the interviews, Paul Stanley praised the upcoming Kiss Avatar show, saying, it will, it's a, hey, listen here, 
Allison, you must listen to me closely. A must-see for everybody, including you, Allison. The technology being used for the KISS avatars originally developed for ABBA's Voyage, we've talked about that, show in London, will allow KISS to stay on the road in retirement. They're going to pack it up like a circus and bring it to town. The KISS avatar were created by Industrial Light and Magic, whom are very good. They've got high uh, uh, marks on Yelp and all of them. Industrial Light and Magic. That's where Steven Spielberg. You ever heard of him and his movies? He did E.T., I think. And were financed and produced by the Swedish company Pop House Entertainment, which is behind ABBA Voyage. Using cutting-edge technology, Pop House Entertainment Group, which was founded by ABBA's Pjorn Ulvaeus. Well, that, that's something right there, right? They, I know what they're going to do in ABBA Voyage. And it's Bjorn. But you know what I say to that? It's Bjorn's fucking company, okay? He'll do what he want to do. And he's going to do your band first. Bjorn Uvalius will create digital versions of KISS. That's right. The project was previewed at the final KISS show in New York City in December 2023. Regarding the Avatar show will look like Stanley told the Allison Hagendorf show, transcribed by Blah Blah Mouth, not what you saw in the video preview. It was a double-edged sword because we were showing people the avatar in their infancy stage. And they look and will look nothing like that. They will be mind-bogglingly realistic. Uh, so you could have just had someone cartoon something up there. You could have said, hey, everybody on YouTube, this is Paul Stanley, the star child. We'd like you to go ahead and draw us a cartoon version of ourself. Of course, it will be instantly trademarked by the band. Uh, but uh, do that, and then we're going to show that at the end of our show. Because if it doesn't, it's not going to look damn anything like it, then why, why'd, you shoot, why'd you do it? When host Allison, I hope she hits in between the eyes with this one. Uh, Allison, come on. When host Allison Hagendorf noted that the preview video was, um, well, it was more of a sneak peek, Paul said, yeah, and this good that, and to that and bad. People look and go, well, that doesn't look anything like them. But what will be? But what it will be is incredible. The state of the art and what technology can do nowadays is incredible. There's a there's there's a that's running outside. What? There's a that's running outside London. That's so. Okay, Paul. There's a that's that's running outside London. That's sold out for three years, and it's an ABBA show and Pop House. The people behind it, you know. Bjorn, Uvalis, are the people who are working with us. And that show is just incredible. What do you think, Gene? Oh, yeah! And yet, the technology is now old. So when they did this for our rock and roll concert, our final show in Madison Square Garden, New York City, it's where we became. Now that's old technology. It won't look anything like that. So George Lucas, you might have heard of him, Industrial Light and Magic, did that E.T. movie, is involved with the Avatar. Ste Wait, George Lucas? Wait a minute. He didn't do E.T., did he? He did the Star Wars movies. So George Lucas is involved with the Avatars. That's right. I said it. George Lucas himself is involved with the Avatars. And the people involved with it are really incredible. Uh, Paul went on to say, the idea for the KISS Avatar show is not to do a KISS concert. The idea whoa, 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 that looks like a real amplifier. That's this narrow kind of thinking, he explained. We want to create something that goes to a must-see for everybody. KISS fans will love it. But other people will go who could care less about KISS will want to see it. Yeah, because George Lukey. George Lucas puts his fingers in the pies. Then people go, well, I'm not a KISS fan, but I'm a Star Wars fan. Maybe he'll have one of them egg, you know, Easter eggs in the pulse in the KISS show. 
It tells us about one of them Star Wars movies. Who the real father is to... Well, we know who Darth Vader's is, right? Uh, it's going to be mind-boggling. It's Kiss and Circus de Soleil. Circus? Yeah, I can't say that. Du Soleil. Soleil. Uh, everything you can imagine on steroids. Oh, yeah. But it will really cro cross that bridge of what's real and what's not. And combine the two. It will be incredible. The idea that we're going to simulate a live show? Leave that to somebody else. We have no desire to do that. We want to create KISS, which is something that breaks the rules, not lives within them. Mm -mm -mm. Paul saying it. Okay, now guys, we're getting on to Carmine Apathy a piece, okay? We're not going to get into that battle. You can get in the comments and argue over it. I've heard it both ways. I've heard it's apathy. I've heard it's a piece. But nevertheless, Carmine Apathy a piece. And I'm not going to, we're going to call him Carmine now. Uh... He holds a very special place for me because, as you know, I'm a drummer, and I drummed for a, a very long time. And the and, and the most crucial book that I ever had as a kid that made it click in my brains how to play drums was Carmine's uh, Rock Drumming. I can't remember. It was just a kind of a bland title for the book, Rock Drums or something like that. But uh, he was the man that taught me boom. Boom, to all the way to. All as good as that one guy, El Sabatino Aberino. Have you seen him on, on YouTube and Instagram and everywhere? He's an amazing drummer. He makes every other drummer in the world look stupid because they bust their balls with their hands and feet to play the song, the Slipknot song. And then he goes, Oh, you mean that one? I'm going to have a cigarette and a coffee and play it with one hand. This guy is who got me to where I needed to be. I might not be no El Sabatino Sabarino, but I'll tell you what. I don't think I was too damn shabby. But he argues that Black Sabbath is not a heavy metal band. They're hard rock. Heavy hard rock. So let's see what he says. Legendary drummer Carmine was recently interviewed on The Adventures of Pipe Man. Well, that's fun which airs on W4CY Radio. Yeah, you can't spit that out good. W4CY Radio. When host the Pipe Man noted, the Pipe, Pipe Man noted that bands like Quiet Riot weren't considered real heavy metal back in the early 1980s. I think they were. That was pretty heavy. I mean, you know, for my little, I mean, I guess, you know, it makes, it makes a little sense. There was other genres that were being created all over the place, but for your little tender ears on the, on MTV or the rock radio, that's what that was heavy metal. Bang your head. Heavy metal drive you mad. Anyway, it says heavy metal back in the 1980s at the start of the thrash metal movement with bands like Metallica and Slayer, Carmine concurred. Even Slayer. They weren't the buzzsaw guitar back in the day. All those bands, Biohazard, I mean, all those bands, they were hard rock. What? What are you talking about, hard rock? Biohazard was hard fucking cool, baby. I question not me. It only Andy, I would say, it only gets rid of brothers. I can't deny reality and life. Gets smutted. I mean, all those bands, they were hard rock, baby. And then, as the pre per se metal movement moved on and everybody started having the buzzsaw, you know, fucking buzzsaw guitar, Metallica kind of buzzsaw guitar, some fast bass drums like Lars Ulrich. That, was a, that, was, that wasn't the right name to pick. Fast bass drums. I mean, but he would know, wouldn't he? He's Carmine. He knows. Fast bass drums like Lars Ulrich. Like that fucking Lars Ulrich. And I think, I think that's where it all started. And all that stuff that's going on today starting with Metallica. In my eyes, I mean, I could be wrong. But for me, 
and all the stuff before, including Black Sabbath, was hard fucking rock. I mean, Black Sabbath was just, to me, like another Led Zeppelin. No. Right out of the gate, they, that you're like, this is, I mean, I can see the Led Zeppelin, a little bit of Led Zeppelin in there. But for the most part, Sabbath was going, we ain't putting pretty little tin. We're, 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 we're going to scare them. We're going to put the, 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 the Blair Witch on the cover of the albums and stuff. Black Sabbath was just to me like another Led Zeppelin coming out of Birmingham. I mean, we played gigs with Black Sabbath, okay? Back in the day. When it first came out with the cactus, with cactus. What? Did they, did, were they called cactus at first? We were rock, oh, he was in cactus. He's going to explain that. Shane, shut your fucking mouth for five fucking seconds. I'm going to tell you what I did. We were a rock blues, and so was Black Sabbath. I mean, paranoid to me back in the day was like the communication breakdown Led Zeppelin kind of thing. And then, as it went along and went along, I mean, their sound got thicker. Don't you mean heavier? But it still didn't have that fucking buzz saw guitar what Metallica plays. That's my own opinion, all right? That's my own opinion. Everybody says Sabbath is heavy. Yeah. They're fucking heavy hard rock. Mm, mm, mm. He's put the snapped on that, snapped and clapped it. Mm. Uh, very quickly, Carrie King says that uh, everyone thinks that Slayer's getting back together again. Shut up. I'm, I'm, can't you see I'm very successful with this Carrie King band that I'm doing? It's getting praise. It's getting, you know, now if it would have flopped, well, there might be a reunion. But, uh, you know, I'm good here is basically what he's saying, isn't he? Everyone thinks Slayer are getting back together, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. I'm trying to figure out what kind of voice I can give this guy. I just used up all my East Coast. In a new interview with Total Guitar Magazine, Carrie the Carry Man King spoke about the fact that Slayer's upcoming reunion shows were announced just days after he revealed... Well, the details of his solo band and debut solo album from Hell I Rise. He said, It caught me off guard, too. Do I wish the timing was different? Absolutely. But that's completely out of my hands. King went on to say that fans shouldn't get their hopes up about a full-scale Slayer reunion. Everyone thinks Slayer are going to get back together again. I can't fucking believe it, they're not. But that couldn't be farther from the truth. Look, we've been turning down gigs ever since we stopped. Remember when I dropped that big chain down on the ground? That means I stopped. This one came and I thought, <clears throat> if we're ever going to do one, this could be cool because it's five year anniversary of our final tour. Will he have that chain on side hip? That will be interesting. And I'd love it if someone would ask that question in one of their interviews. Will you strap back on the 10 pound, which you said you lost 10 pounds, but really we know that the chain was 10 pounds. You know, uh, Kerry King added, we're not going to record any more. That final tour was definitely our final tour. This is just a reason to have some fun, the guys. Well, if you wanted to have some fun, you get old Davey Boy in there, Dave Lombardo. Have a little fun. Play a few shows and then jump back in the coffin. Well, that's what he says. Earlier this month, Carrie King was asked by Jonathan Clark, very, very good, uh, host out of the box on Q104.3, New York's classic rock station about how Slayer's upcoming reunion show came about. Five years since the completion of the uh, what was being billed as the band's farewell tour, he responded, I'll put it in this perspective everybody can understand, okay? I'll put it in a clean way that everyone can understand. Please do, Carrie, please. I lost my place, guys. Oh, we've been turning down offers since the beginning of 2020. The pandemic and all, remember that? We had a pandemic in 2020. 
that's when the offers started to come in. And then it started getting near the five year anniversary of a stop playing. So I'm like, you know what? This is a three show package. Whoa, hold on a minute, I'm having a thinking. I think it would be fun to do. It's kind of a five year anniversary of our last tour. Oh, I'm loving this idea which I'm coming up with. We're never gonna tour again. It ain't gonna happen. We're never gonna record again. That's not gonna happen either. He's This is Kerry King talking to himself, like I do. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, I lost my place. We're never gonna record again. <laughs> that's not gonna happen either. But to do a commemorative show? Well, I think that's kind of fun. I don't have to be married to it for a long time. This is his other his, his other voice, Ann. Now, Carrie, remember, as you think these good ideas up, you don't have to be married to it forever. I know that, thank you. I don't, I'm not trying to get on you. I appreciate your input there. It's very good. Kids don't have to worry about it coming around on tour because we said we wouldn't. There's not a whole lot of weird diabolical shit going on here. I think people have, have just got to say, hey, it's anniversary celebration shows that's going to be the end of it. So leave us be. Then they'll do one in 10 years. And then 15 years. What comes after that? They're going to, mark my words, they're going to do a tour again. But they'll, but they'll probably do it when it's like, oh my God, you're not going to believe who's back together. you got to give it time to people to stop caring. I don't know that that's even possible. I've cared for 40 years. The first time I listened to fucking Hell Awaits and laid in bed with the lights off and heard it going, and I thought, I am going to hell tonight. Let's get into this. Max Cavallera, he says, uh, I want to know why he doesn't have a cell phone. Everyone in the world has a cell phone, Max. Why don't you have a cell phone? He's, I want to know. In a new interview with Finland's Chaos Sign, they're very good. Former Sepultura and current Soulfly frontman Max Cavallera spoke about his recent decisions to launch his official Instagram account. He's got one. How do you have one of them if you don't have a phone? With the help of his wife and manager, Gloria Cavallera, he said, as transcribed by Blah Blah Blah, Yes, I think it was necessary for me to grow as much as I want to stay away from it because I like it. I like it a lot. But I don't like it. Be the only thing in my life. That's why I don't have a cell phone. I'm one of the few people in the world that don't have a cell phone. That's just what I was saying just now. Then I feel very free about that. Because when I go to eat at a restaurant, I want to talk to my friends. My beautiful friends sitting amongst me at the restaurant table. I want to sit down at the table and talk to my people, not stare at some machines. No, I talk to them. They stare at the machines while we sit in the restaurant. I think that's ridiculous when people are in a restaurant and they, they are sitting across from each other and they don't talk to each other. It's fucking sad. It's fucking crazy. It drives me crazy. At the same time, I know how important it is to have your presence in the social media world. And that's why together I found a way to do it with Gloria. I'm calling Gloria. And I say, I'm calling Gloria. Where are you with your little machine, what you look at at the restaurant? So she becomes my voice. She was your voice back in the day, too, with Sepultura, wasn't she? Oh! She shows me everything, so I get to see everything that people are saying. I respond. We do a live Facebook. I was doing a lot of Max Trucks internet video series in which Max discusses these inspirations for many of the songs spanning with his 40 years of music career. I might want to start doing that again and do cameos. 
You need a cell phone for that. Gloria can't be busy with you saying, Gloria, I'm calling you Gloria. I need to do a cameo. This guy paid me $40. He want me to tell his wife he wants a divorce. She's going to be too busy. But I think she's great. But you didn't say her. I might want to start doing that again and do cameos and all this stuff. But I think she's great. She's doing right now six, I think, social media things. She does Max Cavalera. She does Soulfly. Man, you don't want to make, don't make her mad. She has her own Facebook page, and it is cool. She holds up when we're at the restaurant. And I'm sitting, I'm trying to talk to her because I have no cell phone. But she is sitting there. She's not paying attention to me because she's got her little machine in her hand. And she's taking photos of her food. I said, I'm calling you, Gloria. Max Cavalera added, I always did this. Even back in the day, in the September days before the internet, I would read bad reviews. So I get really pissed off and I have a good show. Yep, sometimes you get that fire in the belly. That's what it takes. So now... I kind of do the same. I tell her, like, show me some people talking shit. So, Gloria. So she gives me the phone. And there's all these fucking people talking shit. And I read it. And I go on stage and I fuck shit up. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's ammunition. It's gasoline for the fires. Wonderful. I don't own a cell phone, but my right-hand man does. That doesn't count, Max, because you're saying, please, Gloria, hand me the phone so I can look at more terrible comments. There's Lita Ford, the beautiful Lita Ford. We've got this. We're going we're gonna to quickly just rip through this. We're going to get to Sebastian Bach. Got a two-minute video of him bitching, and then we got your comments. The best part of the show, your comments. I'm going to... I, I, Need, need a shot of my... Daddy needs a shot. Shot of my, my DP. Strawberry cream. Mmm. Strawberry creamy delights. Mmm. Man, that just wakes the damn taste buds up. Um... Lita Ford looks back on her decision to release an autobiography. That's right, kids. She's releasing a book, or she has released a book. Some things just needed to be addressed. In a new interview with the Iron City Rocks podcast, Lita Ford spoke about her decision to release an autobiography, Living Like a Runaway, a memoir, eight years ago. So, guys, I'm sorry. Was there some nuggets in there that we... We didn't know. I just kind of had. I just kind of had a lot, a lot to say, and wanted to put it out there with Harper Collins, who were the publishers on the book, and it was great, and it was a bestseller, and everybody kind of got insight from Lita. I mean, you kind of wait to the battle of the sun of the night. You can't put your whole life in a little book, because I have a lot more to say than that. But it kind of gave me everybody everybody an idea. Okay, I don't know how much. Having to revisit a lot of painful uh, memories is difficult, she explained. Did I enjoy revisiting? No. She added, the hardest part, the hardest thing, was how things kept popping out, and I'm going crazy thinking, hell, I've got to include that. Oh, no, well, that's your life, you know. You're writing a book and you sit down and, and next thing you know, you're just like, man, I might have to write a, a sequel because I've done so many great and wonderful things. Let's get into Sebastian here ever so quickly. I'm going to hit the button. He's going he's gonna to spout it off and then you make heads or tails and find out if he's talking Skid Row or if he's talking about Madame X for whatever bizarre reason he decided to say, no, that band. Oh. Fucking asshole. 
assholes. How you fucking doing, Detroit? Oh boy. Oh, thank you so much for. Uh oh. This is Skid Row with one number singer. Seven, eight, nine. What was it? What number is that guy? Huh? What number is that? Is that replacement number seven? Jesus, he's got. He's. Or number eight? Or, or number nine? And before you said. Well, Dude, ten and his guitar is just like, God damn. fucking one of them. Look at him, that guitar bro is like, God. Where is that? It's like. Sorry guys, I'm talking over the top. I need to hear that again. Nine. And before you said, well, they don't have nine, I can fucking name every fucking one of them. But he can. That's how he goes to sleep at night. Is that the guy from Dragon Force or fucking TNT or whatever the fuck? God damn, he's in a bad mood, isn't he? Man, I'm starting to have a... I'm starting to think this guy's a real fucking jerk. It was already a miserable experience and we didn't even get on the phone. What? I don't know what that was all about. What? Yeah, he's, he's acting jer really jerky. I'm not appreciating your attitude, pal. Okay, we're done with that. You damn, you, you, I, I feel like he was, he's being kind of really jerky. He was having a bad day there. It is time for your comments. That's right. Each and every episode that we put out, you listen to that episode, said episode. Then you get in the comments and, and you, you, you tell me what you think about the stories that we've done. Then on the following episode, I read those comments from the last episode. And we are here with our fine, fine troopers. Miss Althea is up first. She's got the goods. Let's go. The dumbstruck fool says, Blackie Lala. She's talking Blackie. The tour name sounds like bank-sponsored 1970s horror fodder that is just waiting to be one of Mike B's bad movies, but we love them anyways. Pardon me, Miss Althea. <sighs> I knew that was coming because, you know, that, that Dr. Pepper, come on. You guys were probably amazed at the big chug that I took. And that I was holding that in, but um, uh, movies that love anyway. Popcorn scent, popcorn scented fog, huh? How appropriate! Yeah, Blackie Lawless, and he says one of his favorite flavors of fog smoke for their stage is popcorn, and they got cotton candy too. Uh, Miss Althea on Bach and Jericho sounds like a couple of ambulance chasers. Haven't we been through this before? Yes, we have. For at least two years, I am starting to think that Baz truly does not know what to do with himself if he is not starting and or staying in the middle of some kind of debate. And you just saw that clip. He was really coming across jerky. That hits him in all the wrong spots, not being in Skid Row, man. That hits him just... Oh. He can name all nine singers. That's how he goes to sleep at night. You know how some people count sheeps? He counts fucking Skid Row members. He's like... Oh. Eric Grandma. Oh. Um, let's see. Miss Althea on Robert Sweet, the sweetest boy out of Michael and Robert Sweet of Striper. I think his own brother's health, as well as Oz's, rather than booking issues. Yes, okay, I think it's his own brother's health, as well as Oz's, Oz Fox's, rather than booking issues, might be a slightly bigger priority for the, appro uh, for the Almighty. Yeah, and the dark beard with long blonde hair under an ill-fitted baseball cap, right, isn't working. Forget about whether or not it is appropriate to have Jesus on his cross necklace. Yeah, the, the whole, and there's faces, and maybe my face is one of those that doesn't look good in a beard, but I'll tell you right now, I have a beard for the right reasons. I have a weak goddamn chin. I'll tell you, I look like a basketball. If I shave my head and face, I look like a basketball. 
Um, but uh, some people, Robert Sweet and Eminem, are just people that don't, it, something just doesn't click when they have a beard. Get back to me and tell me what you think of that theory. Miss Althea on Japanese vampires that go kaboom. I unfortunately know nothing about this, but it sounds part, uh, but but it sounds part funny, part gross, and part something up out of a Gazette Dogma era music video. Ugly might come close. Rest in peace, and I would love a permit per pronunciation of this name. Rest in peace, Raita. I know I'm saying it wrong. Uh, oh, Miss Althea is going to tell us what the UAP. UAP stands for Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. God damn! Every time I say that word, I mean, you know what I'm. If you're, if you're, if you're a, if you're my age, you know what I'm. Just gonna do, 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 do. It's just every time you utter that word, I don't know what. So it stands for Unidentified Aerial Phenomena because it's flying in the air and they're not sure what it is. Uh, oh, and then here's some more. Here's some more goodies. Because uh, I asked about if Bad Religion was the ones that wrote 21st Century Digital Boy. Miss Althea, 21st Century Digital Boy is not a cover as far as I know. But maybe you were thinking of T-Rex's 20th Century Boy. Okay, so maybe they just... Uh, which has been covered a ton of times. Bang Tango did a great version of it. And while it was never officially recorded by them, it was a staple of X Japan's live show for many years. Really? Wow. Oh. So 21st Century Digital Boy is the, the uh, uh, bad religion. Uh, the the wor uh, They would often switch up their band parts with most of the time Hide taking over as front man on lead vocal. You couldn't understand a word he said, but oh, was he adorable. May he and Tashi rest in peace. R Raida from Gazette and Hide and Tashi rest in peace. There you go. Well done. Miss Althea, there's your heart. MB coming in because I can't click this to find out what's going on with it. But MB coming in. I must see Chris Holmes play on stage with Blackie before they die. Come on, man. How hard is it to let it all go and just be adults about it? You'd sell twice the tickets if you brought him back for the tour. Don't be like Gene and Paul, Blackie. I mean, it's one of them things, man. You got to get Randy. You got to get all of them back together again and do it. Come on. Quit beating around the damn bush. Well done. There's your heart. We're going to call him the Rev. Because I don't know why they do that. And I, I you know, some of these I recognize right off the bat when I see them. But uh, thank you, Rev. You kick an ass, man. I'd go fit unto others and, Dane, and, and Death Angel. Yeah. Though that that's going to, I predict there's going to be sellouts. You're going to see. Some sellout shows. If you haven't heard that band, Unto Others, they're great. It's like kind of traditional gothic heavy metal. And I get a real kind of mid-early Killing Joke vibe or Jazz Coleman vibe from the singer's voice. But they're really good. And Unto Others and Death Angel is worth, the, is worth paying for to me. And the plum or the, the, the cream... The carrot cream on top is that uh, Wasp is doing the first record, so I love that. So thank you, sir. Mike Buchanan coming in. He's got his goodies. He was way down today. First off, let me get this one out of the way. Why does Blackie look like my grandma who smoked unfiltered cigarettes for 50 years? It's crazy, right? My grandfather smoked cigarettes for probably 60 years unfiltered. He never smoked a filter. So that, that's where the cancer is. Uh, 
uh, for 50 years. And this is me being selfish. I think WASP need to add those few dates from the 40th anniversary tour that were canceled. Yes, that includes the show I was going to go see. But alas, they are not. Closest they will come to me is over three hours away. Are you going to take that trek? Let's get into uh, now for your movies that are bad, but we love them anyways. A Roger Corman classic, Battle Beyond the Stars, 1980. Always good to watch an old campy sci-fi movie once in a while. This was an overall good watch. Decent acting, good take on the plot of Seven Samurai and the Magnificent Seven, and good cheesy special effects for its time, but it doesn't come close to how Star Wars blew away audiences across the globe. Still, it's nice to know how much of an impact Star Wars has had on our culture. This and this film is one indication. While it looks and feels like Star Wars, its story is different, not the same. Recommended if you like cult sci-fi and campy effects. Grab your favorite beverage, sit in your favorite chair, pop some popcorn, and press play. You're getting good, man. You're getting good. Uh, Mike Buchanan says, let's see, I've talked about Blackie already, so let's jump into Sebastian and Fozzie. Hands down, Sebastian would destroy. I'm, 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 I'm starting to, I'm starting to feel a little sour on Sebastian after I watched that little tantrum he threw. Jericho in a, okay, Seba, he, hands down, Sebastian would destroy Jericho in a sing-off. I have no love for the band Fozzie, just not for me. And Mike Buchanan says, uh, okay, I'm going to get some heat for this. I've just never been that big of a fan of Iron Maiden, but wouldn't say no to going to see them live someday. But saying that Bruce's new solo album is very, is very worth the listen, it is, so it is, waiting for that guy to come post a comment about Bruce and his wife's death, that Oscar. He always drops in there. He always seems to pop up whenever Bruce is mentioned. Guys, yeah, isn't that the case? Oscar, he'll pop in. That in this next episode, he'll pop in and say, by the way, he's writing a book about it. Wow, uh, Mike Buchanan says, wow, an article from Robert Sweet. He's the one member that just stays quiet and hides in the background. No, the really means, uh, not that, that that really means, what? No, the really means so fucking about Striper. I'm thinking, okay, I don't know what that is. No fucking? Uh, no, okay, about Striper. I'm thinking it started out as a gimmick to make them stand out on the Sunset Strip, but that's my opinion, but has turned them into a monster of a band. Had the band just played secular music, I'm saying we wouldn't be talking about Striper today. That's not a bad point to make. They were pushed out there, you know, Christian, what? And then the colors, I mean, it was like a billboard, wasn't it? You know, they're yellow and black and everything. That's a very good point. Would they have been? And, I mean, to be honest, didn't they do the one record? I mean, I think you like that record, but uh, where they didn't take all... what. It, they took all the yellow and black off. I wonder what in sales wise where that record did. It's a very good point. Uh, Mike Buchanan says, "Needn't worry, Mark will still be singing with Death Angel." And again, Mark's vocals on Carrie's album are nothing less than otherworldly. Boy, I heard him singing "Rain and Blood." I almost wanted to do a video autopsy on it because he sounded like a twenty-five-year-old Tom Mariah. And the song sounded just blistering. Um, nothing more than otherworldly. And again, let's bring up how Carrie missed the mark and should have called the band Kingslayer. 100%. That's one of the biggest mistakes. That'll be his final words on his... Carrie! Oh my God, he's dying. Mother, mother, get in here. Carrie's, got, Carrie's dead. He's going. Do you have anything to say to us? Anything. I know you're struggling right now between heaven and hell. You're in the in the, in the war zone, as they call it. But do you have anything left to say? And they say, 
I should have called my band King Slayer. <laughs> All right, it is time. Okay. It would be my pleasure to scoop dirt on some uh, jive talking joke. Okay, what? I'm, I, I'm, I'm losing my shit here. Kingslayer, it would be my pleasure to scoop dirt on you someday. Yes, because I had mentioned that these guys, they are tried and true. They're here all the time in the comments. They're going to get them, they're going to get a shovel to, dump, to, to whisk dirt on me. But I'm thinking I'll go with that pod thing. Have you seen that? You'll still be able to shovel dirt on me. Don't worry about it. But have you seen those pods where you can put your body in like some kind of thing and it, it, it becomes a tree? I like that idea. Especially if it's like, if you're doing that, there's no autopsies. There's no scooping the guts out and the brains and everything and then putting it all back in the chest cavity. We need you just the way you are, buddy. TMI on that one. And now, your jive talking jokes of the week via Mike Buchanan. What do you call a stinky pachyderm? Pachyderm? A smellophant. Okay, it's a pachyderm. Uh, last night at dinner, the waitress. Um, how did you find your steak, sir? I just looked next to the potatoes and there it was that's pretty good so i'll do that one more time last night at dinner waitress how did you like how did you find your steak sir me i just looked next to the potatoes and there it was i threw a boomerang like six years ago it never came back now i live in constant fear what do you call a bee that was born before june a maybe. Oh, that's going to work. That might get me socked in the chops. And I'm going to deliver it just that way. That might get me a sock. And finally, a sperm donor, a carpenter, and Julius Caesar walk into a bar. He came, he saw, he conquered. There you go, my friend. Well done, well done. Sticky Doll. They got their Facebook show and all that. Look up Sticky Doll. There's another fairly regular right there. The Sticky Doll program and crew. Uh, and they say, Blackie, damn it, come on. Please put down the chocolate cake. Change your clothes. Stop fibbing about your fire and blood. And, and your... What's that? And... Ah, yeah? Turn off the backing tracks. Thanks. We still love you, Blackie. Love you too, Shane. See you next Saturday. Oh, that's great. Well, I don't know what that hiccup was. hi ya. Yeah. Was it a hi ya, yeah, like a karate kick? And hi ya. Yeah. Turn off the backing track. You just got that backwards. There you go. There's your heart. And then we got rock stars down here. Rock, rock for you now. Hi, Rock and Sean. Keep talking that jive, my brother, in metal. Mm, mm, mm. You know what? You're going to be a real rock star today, buddy, because um, you're going to get some emoticons. Boom. Uh, okay, everybody, let's get back to Lita. I went to a party last Saturday night. Get out there, seize the day, take on the world. You know, you know what you need to fix, what you need to change. You know, you got a you got a plugged toilet downstairs, but you also got a plugged up, uh, you know, uh, life situation. You need to figure something out about that. Or maybe it's going just fantastic and great for you. And you say, Shane, how dare you try to tear my fucking family apart? Right at the end of your podcast. Dear, he's done it. He's tried to tear our family apart. I'll never listen to another episode, ever. Let's just go for it, baby. Oh! Oh, 
you love this episode, you're gonna love it some more every week, every week, heavy metal good week.